Today we have a, 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 an interview that is actually a class in American history. Black history is American history. We're going to learn a few things that maybe many of us don't know. And I think it's extremely important to learn those things because this is our history. And another thing that I want to ask all of you is to please, to please, this is the interviews that we wish every single one of you would share. This is the things that we need to know. This is the things that we need to pass on. History should be passed on to the next generation and hopefully they will pass it on to the next generation. We need to learn more about American history. Vinny, once again, thank you. Thank you for, uh, you know, taking me into your own home, your own studio. This is where the magic happens. This is where the work that you do is created. Often we see it outside once it's done, but we have no idea of the concept. What is behind the work that you do? But before we go there, tell us about the artwork that was the first, you know, part, the first part of the of this video. So we have Harriet Tubman running through my studio. She's seven feet tall, um, and it's you might have noticed a young Harriet Tubman. Most people don't realize that Harriet Tubman was only 29 years old um, when she first escaped slavery in Maryland and began to become uh, a conductor on the Underground Railroad. So. Um, it's a facet of the story that somehow people have left out. So clearly the first idea was to make her young. Um, she's running and of course uh, my signature style is bar relief sculptures on the sculpture. So on the front of the skirt there's her leading people across the Niagara Fall Bridge. Um, and then of course as you walk around the sculpture there are other aspects of her history. For instance, you know, this one was a spy for um, the army. and. They swear that she, she was a spy for the army. She was a spy for the army. As a matter of fact, you may not know that there is a sculpture of Harriet Tubman um, in Washington, D.C., very quietly out in front of the CIA um, with no real explanation. This chick helped the war be won. So that's Harriet Tubman. And then the other sculpture um, is the eight foot high EG, which means long journey in Yoruba. And um, she is for the Sacred Place of My Ancestors, which is an African burial ground in Montgomery, New York, which is up in Orange County, just above Woodbury Commons. You know, <coughs> I feel kind of connected with your art, with, uh, you know, your sculpture, because I'm a natural born African. I came from Mozambique, which is in the south coast of Africa. Mm -hmm. So I connect, okay? Mm -hmm. And even if I didn't, your artwork is just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. But about that statue, you, we all see her at the later stages in her life. People don't have an image of her in her 20s. Basically, she was just a young woman. Well, there's a lot we take for granted. You know, um, for instance, photography um, was new in her time. It's amazing that Frederick Douglass became one of the most photographed people of all time. He understood the power of image. image. And so um, with Harriet, you know, we only have a couple of images of her. Now, <coughs> Jimmy, <coughs> excuse me. as I tell all my guests, I apologize in the beginning because I'm talking to you and I'm also texting. But I don't want you to think that I'm being disrespectful. It's because I'm monitoring the conversation, see if somebody has a question to ask you, so I can say, you know, I can read and I can relate the question to you. By no way it's a mean of uh, disrespect. You know, we've, been, we've done a few interviews. 
what do you think is the lacking of the this generation in regards to black history it's america history things that they might not know they might not understand they might not relate to the importance of preserving the art that you do because i remember not long ago there were people vandalizing some of the stuff that you did and here in the gary square right in the by the by the metro north correct <laughs> they were painting and i think it's extremely important for all of us to see that art not just as your art but as our art yes yes um i think the more you learn about history and history is the memory of people i think the more you learn about history um the more you can relate to how things happen as a human being so for instance i'm getting ready to start the reverend james lawson and oftentimes when I say to people, do you know who the Reverend James Lawson is? People are like, oh yeah, I think I do. And it's like, who is he? And then when they think about it, they really don't know. This is the guy who was the war general uh, for the civil rights movement. He was the guy who was studying with Gandhi. Martin Luther King called him while he was in India. And he's telling Martin Luther King about Gandhiism. And King was like, well, you need to come back and teach the children this information is like, no, no, I'm busy. And so King commanded him back to the United States. <clears throat> he ended up going to Tennessee and he mentored these eight college students who went on to become, again, legends of their own. John Lewis, Marion Barry, Diane Nash, there's a bunch of them. <coughs> Pardon me, give me a little cold. Anyway, the point of it is, is that this is the guy who orchestrated the March on Washington the Selma March, the Freedom Rides, the Senate, all the major marches in the 60s, this is the guy who orchestrated them. And he's 92 years old, he's still alive, still, still teaching, alive? still teaching in California. Can you get an interview with him? I don't know, he's 92. At any rate, the point of it is, is that <clears throat> he wants the truth to be known, and so he's coming out with a book this spring, and you know, he's going to clarify some things because most of the documentation that's been on the civil rights subject has been done by white people. And he's like, and they've got some things incorrect. But again, this is why we keep revisiting history to learn more um, so that we can get more of the authentic background on what really happened. Harriet Tubman was 29 years old. That makes a difference when you look at the sculpture. You know, you look at, oh, she's young. It's like, no, no, no. This is how she actually was. It's authentic. So the idea is to learn more about our stories. And, of course, you know, I choose public art because public art is easy. Um, it's less expensive to make in a movie. You know, and so uh, it's an opportunity to just share stories. Um, it's instructional, you know. Racism is something that has to be unlearned. You know, we have to unlearn hate. And so it's an opportunity to create dialogue. It fosters dialogue. You know, it's the whole purpose of art in public places for people to get together and to <clears throat> examine a subject and to really understand the life lesson. I think it's important to learn history in the right context because up to now or not long ago, we learned history according to those that made the bad things happen. And they portrayed history in a certain way. <coughs> but nowadays, we get, sorry, people like you and others, we are unlearning the wrong and correcting it. This is how it happened. This is what went on. This is what really you need to learn. Tell me a little bit about the spy, Truman spy. You know, what do you mean by it? There is a, 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 an image of her at the CIA, you say? Or the entrance? Correct me. Okay, one second. I need emergency puffer. Okay. So, <coughs> as Vini is stepping away, she, you know, uh, we're going to wait a little, you know, a few moments. Guys, don't forget, if uh, you like Yonka's voice and you support Yonka's voice, don't forget to send us some stars. Uh, ask your friends, your family to uh, join Yonka's voice Facebook page, Instagram, and YouTube channel. It's important for people to know about us. 
We do all this for you. So if you can support us, make us get larger, make our circulation reach a larger audience, we, we appreciate. We sincerely appreciate. Vinny's back. I'm sorry. That's, That's okay, Vinny. So, CIA. There's a sculpture of Harriet Tubman in front of the CIA building in Washington, D.C. It appeared very quietly. There was no fanfare, but she's there. And a lot of people don't really know the role that she played in winning the Civil War. Um, she, too, was a tactician. Um, you know, she ran information back and forth for the Army uh, to enable them to advance to winning. And there's not a lot, a lot, a lot of information on what exactly she did, um, but evidently it made enough of a difference to win the war. And so, you know, again, just try to really examine different facets of her life um, because it's inspiring. You know, it's inspiring to young people, it's inspiring to people in general to learn about what motivated an everyday girl to do extraordinary things. I mean, it's one thing to escape slavery for yourself. It's another thing to go back 13 times <clears throat> to help other people. What makes a person do that? Um, you know, you're putting your own life in jeopardy every single time, but you're compelled to do this. And of course, you know, she's doing this for her family, but she's also doing this just because she can do this. Rini, you are an inspiration yourself. Maybe you don't risk your life as she did, but you are an inspiration and a motivation to a lot of young people out there. You are teaching lots of things that most of us did not know, including I. Okay. You just teach me a couple of things today. So you are a fountain of knowledge. And, uh, and you can teach because people need to learn. Need to learn. They need, we need to learn our history. Not just our history, but American history. Yes. You know, again, it helps people define their purpose, their destiny. You know, you never know what you're doing here. Like, you know, who am I? Where am I? How did I get here? What am I? What is my point? And so, um, I just found that, you know, growing up <clears throat> in the '60s, the '70s, you know, when we were taught excellence is the priority, mediocrity is not goals. Um, serve your community. Use your education, you know, be of good use. Um, you don't have to have an education to serve. I mean, you just have to want to help, you know, to make life better for yourself as well as your community. You can do it in small ways. You can do it by helping one person. You don't have to help multitudes. Um, it's the whole idea that um, life should not be selfish and self serving. Who are you? What is your mission? What is your goal? Let's say somebody is <coughs> watching this video long after we are gone and they are thinking and looking at you and said who is this woman what would you like to be seen as a hundred years from now what was your mission what is your goal what is your purpose i started off as a little kid that obviously was gifted and you know the question always is what is the purpose of the gift <coughs> Everybody has a gift. Everybody has something that they excel at. The question is, what is the purpose of that? What, what can you use it for? What can you do with it? Um, you know, in the beginning, I was the kind of artist that just wanted to make things for myself. It was pleasurable to just create things. And at some point, it occurred to me that um, the art could be used for good. <clears throat> so in the beginning, um, you know, as I was learning graphic design, I would give discounts to black businesses because there were many, many black people, let's talk about Yonkers, you know, that were doing amazing and wonderful things, but their publications, their collateral publications weren't really reflecting their excellence. <clears throat> so you discount, discount the service to enable people to afford the service so they can look good, you know, and actually look like the walk that they're walking. And so that was that was the beginning of quote unquote my service, and then of course you know I write. So it was a period where you know I was writing for um, Gannett 
suburban newspapers for the Herald Statesman here in Yonkers. And again, just illuminating greatness. You know, people do small things that are really great that, you know, help the community. Um, and, you know, a lot of these people weren't getting covered in the newspaper. So, you know, I gave a lot of folks illumination. You know, do you know about REAP? Do you know about this? Do you know about that? You know, local people who were, again, doing things in their own small way, but were really making a contribution to the community, making it known, and again, documenting it. And then ultimately, when I began sculpting, I was like, oh God, it's really serious now. Um, this was at a time when we didn't have internet. I didn't learn about anything without internet. And so trying to figure out how to afford the medium of sculpting, because it's an expensive medium, you know, I came across the idea of art for public places because there are budgets that are created for artists to create quote unquote statues. <clears throat> and so um, again, no internet, trying to figure out how do you even compete for that sort of thing? Where do you find the job calls? What's the classified flight for sculpting? Couldn't figure it out. So I did the wing Ella. Yeah. You know, I was like, well, let me just ask the city and I'll create my own commission. So I created the Ella Fitzgerald Commission. You know, I'm a strong believer, and I can relate to that, that very often we start doing something for a particular reason, but we stay doing that something for a whole different reason. Do you agree with that? Because like you just said, you start your sculpture, your art expression for a particular reason. You liked it. You enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But the reason you continued on it and the reason why you're still doing it, and if I look at you today and what you have accomplished. It's purpose. It's, it's about purpose. purpose. It's like, what is, your, what is your purpose? And so, um, you know, it's, life becomes so much easier when you have a purpose-filled life. You know, when you have goals and milestones and dreams and things like that to live for. And so, you know, everyone can do that for themselves. Um, what's nice is when you can do it and your goals and your purpose serve others. I was in a press conference. I don't think you were there. It was on South Broadway at the old railroad on South Broadway. Some culture was placed. I don't know if you were around. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if that was my question or uh, somebody else's question to one of the artists. And I'm going to ask you the same question. And I want to compare your answer to her answer. I'm going to tell you what her answer was. Okay. When is retirement? <coughs> when are you going to retire from uh, what you've been doing? I don't think there's going to be a retirement. Um, I think it's going to be about health. You know, I, I'll be making art as long as my health lasts. Um, there's no need to retire. You know, it, it's really going to be about will my body let me make art? Your answer was much in line with that answer. She gave me a different uh, wording, a different caption, but the same thing. An artist never retires, he keeps creating. It's not work, it's love. You know, it's, we don't think of it as work, and we call it our work, um, but when we're in the middle of it, it's just pure expression of love. You're, in the flow, mm -hmm. and those are goals. No, that statue, Truman's statue, mm -hmm. it's on his way out, she's on his way out. Going to, and why? So Harriet Tubman, on the road to freedom, uh, is going to the foundry on Monday, and she'll be cast here in, in uh, lower New York State, and she's going up to Niagara Falls to the Underground Railroad Heritage Museum in Niagara Falls, New York. Will so. we be able to see it before it goes? Oh, absolutely. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. You know, um, usually I include folks in my process. So the next time you see her, it'll be the wax. So, um, you know, wax refinement takes a while. And then ultimately uh, she'll be cast over the summer and we're hoping to install her before the winter um, now, this year. Before we go further, let me ask our friends that are following and watching this video, that this is the type of video that I wish you guys would share. The other negativity that sometimes we post because news is news, I don't make the news, I just report the news. And I really don't care much if you share those. But I do care if you share this interview because this interview can actually change people's lives. 
This interview can actually motivate other people. This interview can be watched by your daughter, your son, who wants to be an artist and learn a little bit about more the industry. I, I want to say something. Yeah. You know, people, <clears throat> people talk about wanting to be an artist. Um, I don't think that you necessarily want to be an artist. I think you are, you are not. Um, I think the challenge for young artists is trying to figure out their way. Because in the beginning, um, the question is, what do you do with the gift? <clears throat> in the beginning, when you're really young, you're just kind of exploring your capacity and things like that. But at some point, um, there's something called application. And the question is whether or not you choose to make art be your major in school, whether you choose to make art be your business. And for many people, they put it aside and they choose other kinds of careers and they have the ability, but they don't do anything with it. That's common. Um, there are some people who find balance. You know, they got the regular proverbial day job and they got the artwork and then you have those of us who just are straight working artists. <clears throat> it really is grounded in your passion for what you do. How much do you love your medium? I mean, and, and it's the same for every medium. It's not like visual art is one thing and music is another. It's like art is art. Um, and, and many of us come here highly gifted. The question is, what you want to do with the gift? Well, maybe I phrased the phrase it wrong because you know English is not my first language, so I try to express myself in the best way. What I was trying to say is, often we have a gift, but often we don't realize the gift that we have. And sometimes when we realize that we do have a gift, now what do we do with that gift? Because sometimes we can share, we can help, we can talk to the others and maybe make their lives or understand they give better than we understood ours. Mm -hmm. So if you are talking to a, a young artist, a young Vini, somebody that you can look at and say, that was me. And the person has Mentorship. some questions. <coughs> Mentorship. Where do we get it? M mentors, find yourself a mentor. Um, get over ageism, you know, talk to older people. Um, and when I say older, if you're 18, then talk to somebody who's 35. You know, somebody who's further down the road that you want to go down. Um, and humble yourself. Be willing to be a beginner. You know, ask somebody a question. Um, ask them how they got to be doing what they're doing. Ask them what their daily life is like. Um, begin to try to learn from people who are doing what you want to do. You know, how do I get from here to there? Um, older people are just like young people. They've just been here longer. You know, so I believe in mentorship. It's important to, to ask a lot of questions to people who know the answers. Um, all information is not in school. It's not. Most of the information is in the street. And, of course, there's your phone. There's YouTube. There's so many ways to access information. Um, you just really need to want to know. Many years ago, I used to practice karate, uh -huh. and uh, I practiced for many years, about 40, 35, 40. And I had a, a teacher, Sensei Kimura, who mm -hmm. passed a few years ago. And I remember in one of the classes, uh, he used to teach, and this kid that was there putting this, that, a this, and, and Sensei, Sensei turned to him and said, uh, you want to be a student, or you want to be the teacher? What he was trying to say is, I am your mentor. You chose to be here. Learn from me. And uh, what exactly what you're saying? You know, mm -hmm. find a mentor, ask questions, but questions that can help you, can mm -hmm. help you on your own. And a lot of people, you'd be surprised, a lot of people are tickled when young people come to them and ask for help. They're more than happy to ask. And even if you're older, it does, I mean, I have mentors, you know, I've, I've got friends that are older than me, 70 and 80 years old, and, you know, I call them to ask for insights and things like that, because the goal is to have clarity. You know, if you're going to have vision, you need clarity, and, and how you get it is by really delving into the details of a subject and learning cause and effect. None of us are here forever, Vinny. Sooner or later, our lease on life expires. Sometimes we don't get any notice that our lease is up. Mm -hmm. 
but people will remember us after we are gone. What would you like to be remembered as? Oh, I, I'm leaving a, a very wonderful legacy of art for black people in this country. Um, I'm giving us a voice. Um, I'm telling our stories from our perspective. And um, the beautiful thing about bronze is that it lasts for a couple of hundred years, so it's, it'll have some longevity to it. Um, it's also a trajectory, you know, it's like, okay, well, she did this, then I can do this. You know, hopefully people will build on the work that I've done and they'll do more because <clears throat> African Americans have been marginalized to such a degree that it, it will take a couple of centuries for us to catch up in telling our stories. So hopefully, you know, there will be other artists that look at the work and know that, you know, they too can be a public artist. They can put art in public places that, you know, has the power to tell a story for a very long time. I always refer to you as <coughs> our Vinnie Bagwell, mm -hmm. but I have to correct that statement. You are not our Stiankas, you belong to the world now, okay? You are an artist, artist that is known everywhere, all over. I only mean when I say our Vinnie, because I want to focus and, and, and I want to show the people that there is a lot of good stuff that comes from Yonkers. Oh, Yonkers is amazing. It's an amazing So thing. many good, it's the water. It's yeah. the water. <laughs> but when you reach a certain level, or, you know, then you become universal. You belong to all of us. Through you, our history is going to be heard everywhere. Your pieces are displayed in museums. There is people talking about that piece. There is people teaching about that piece. There is people telling how that piece came about. And that's where your voice is being heard by millions, not directly from you, but by you at the same time. Well, I hope I set an example. You know, you, you, you stand as an example to other people. It's like, this is how I'm doing it. You can look at how I do my business and think, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it like this. And again, it's an inspiration. It's an inspiration. The idea is, is, you know, you start a spark and, um, you know, you create a, a path for others to follow. It's like, you know, when I was growing up, art was not considered to be a, well, it wasn't a goal for a job. You know, my mother told me, oh, you know, you can't make any money as an artist. Of course, the joy is that you can. <coughs> the question is how you choose to do it. And so, um, you know, everybody's different. What works for me may not work for anybody else. Uh, but it's the whole idea that you can make a living creating art. And particularly when you're talking about public art. Now, Vini, you are, as I said earlier, you are a fountain of knowledge. And uh, an interview of 30 minutes is not enough to learn all We'll, we'll talk you, again. We will talk <laughs> again. But until we talk again, I want people to, to know where to go to learn about you, learn about your work. So please tell us, website, Instagram, whatever social media of your preference is, all, all, all of them, so okay. they can go and learn. So when we have the next interview, they will come prepared with questions okay. that can help them. Okay, so hi, I'm Vinnie, like my cousin Vinnie, V-I-N-N-I-E, Bagwell, B-A-G-W-E-L-L, VinnieBagwell.com. Um, at Vinnie Bagwell on Instagram, Facebook. You don't have to be a friend of mine to follow me on Facebook. My page is open. Um, and, and that's pretty much the gist of it. You know, we try to have these little YouTube videos. You can find me on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. You know, get videos on there. I'm um, talking about different projects and, you know, different uh, things uh, that I'm working on. Um, because I'm a public artist, you know, I try to create interactions you know so I have previews of my artwork in studio I invite people to come in uh, occasionally it's amazing studio guys yeah it's amazing it's cool you know you guys watching this on YouTube you don't get the full impact of what this this is a museum it's not just a, a, a workshop yeah, my girlfriend calls it fancy and anyway <laughs> she's just so fancy um, but you know the, the idea is to create a, a cool space uh, you know I like it here and there's art going on up in here. There's stuff that I've made, which is kind of cool, but there's always stuff in the process of being made 
And so um, follow me on social media. So guys, as I always say, my hashtag is actions, not words. The world is full of people with good intentions. But what sets us apart from those people with good intentions that sometimes that's all they have is our actions. Follow Vini, support Vini, learn about Vini Bagwell, support Yonkers Voice, share, share this interview, spread the word. Yonkers, it's full of good, positive, and beautiful talent. Very much so. Very much so, right? So follow us, support. I'm not sure how uh, active is Vini on her uh, social platform. What I mean by it is if she engages, if she does reply. But you know, she's a busy woman, busy woman. But I'm sure that if you have a question and she has the time, she will answer your question. I answer all questions. You answer all questions? I do. Good, that's good to know. So guys, thank you for watching. Until next time, and don't forget to share this. This is the interviews that I wish you would share and make it viral. Thank you. Till next time. Thank you. Always. Appreciate thank you. you.